What's going on you guys? This is Aaron from Departures Capital and welcome to the video. In this video we're talking all about silver and three top performing silver stocks for 2021. I've been talking about silver for the past couple of months guys. I've maintained my bullish tone despite the pullback. I've been talking about how silver has been looking more bullish than gold and it truly is outperforming today. We've seen some tremendous gains for the sector and we're going to be going over three interesting companies that have performed exceptionally well. I've talked about them all when they are substantially lower consistently talked about them, believed in them, and um, just maintained my long-term bullish stance on silver, along with gold, but more so silver recently. As I've been saying, you know, I've been 60 to 70 percent silver, and then the rest in gold in terms of my precious metal outlook. So anyways, guys, let's get straight into the video. Last but not least, I want to congratulate all my gold and silver investors, specifically my silver investors. So far, the market's been good to us, but I think that 2021 is setting up to be, you know, this trade is looking to be like the trade of the year. So I hope that it happens. You know, 2020, looking back, we had EV, we had psychedelics. I think psychedelics will also do very well in 2021. But gold and silver, silver specifically, is looking like it is going to be one of the most exciting trades of 2021. And I got to say, I'm very excited. So guys, with that being said, if you do support me, the channel and all the videos, and you know I will maintain that long-term bullish stance on gold and silver, then kindly explode that like button means the world to me and it helps my videos so, so very much along with if you are a new viewer to the channel, but you appreciate coverage on companies and sectors just like the ones that we talk about. Of course, don't forget to cash that subscribe button and ring the market bell for notifications. And let's get straight into this video. So we're going to start this off with comment of the day. In our first video, we did drop uh, an interview today for Next. We interviewed the president, Ash Guglani, very good interview, very interesting company. It's performed great since our IPO of around, I believe it IPO'd around $1.60 and now we're over two bucks. I did manage to snag some around in the 140s. So looking pretty good on that position so far. Let's talk about the most recent video that we posted and comment of the day. So don't know if it's time to add to Numi or not, still up 40% on the pullback. We did get another pullback today. I didn't have any enough capital to add to Numi. I kind of want to. But I want to see if it breaks down below a dollar. That's kind of where I'm looking at it right now. And you know, I did buy around a little bit at 150. Still thought it was a little bit too high, but I took a tiny position at 150. Then around 120. So now I'm just kind of waiting and I will average down one more time. And then I probably won't touch it until I'm in the green. Fingers crossed, hopefully I'm in the green. So Steve TV, I sold DSV because all of the insider selling bought more MindMed. And that is something that I want to investigate. So thanks so much, Steve, for letting me know about that. We did see a bunch of shares dumped at the close. Kind of concerning, so I will be looking into that tonight and may cut my position. I'm not 100% sure what's going on, but um, thank you so much for bringing that up. Silver looking good and GRSL up almost 10%. What's going on with FSX and Leviathan? I still haven't gotten my Leviathan shares and can't seem to find them listed anywhere, including Yahoo Finance. So Leviathan's not trading yet. In terms of that, contact your broker. I have in fact received my shares. I expect Leviathan to trade in the next couple weeks. First week or second week of January is what I've been hearing. So we'll see what happens, but um, contact your broker, man, because uh, a lot of people already got their shares. I heard a couple people didn't, but the stock itself is not trading yet. So Joseph Dredd, the Peking duck was superb. Not so keen on the chicken feet though, or the snake infested bottles of whiskey. Interesting. Um, I, I'd assume that we're talking about China here, but uh, yeah, Peking duck was awesome. I had that in Beijing. Drew Bryant, next innovations, love the concept. I cannot trade on Charles Schwab or Weeble. How come they don't have an OTC ticker? Great question and I'll have to do some investigating for you. Sold some mid caps today, two in gold, one in silver, picked up more small caps, ghost sag, sterling metals, also picked up defiant silver and one more uranium play, LAM. Thanks for bringing up those stocks. Thinking about top five copper plays. So that's a great video for departure stocks. I'm thinking about making that or maybe for departures capital. We'll see. We'll see. You're getting blurry around 20 seconds. Maybe not good to be driving, but do get some fresh air. I guess you meant I was rather tired. So um, I did get some fresh air yesterday. I did manage to go for a drive. As you guys can see, it's raining now. So it's really raining. But uh Oh my gosh, guys, we got the MindMed merch. So for all my MindMedsters, that's what I'm going to call you guys. The merch is on the way. I will be wearing it tomorrow for tomorrow's video, and I'm very excited. 
Very excited to do a giveaway, so we'll be keeping you guys up to date on that. And that's it for comment of the day. So let's get into the next thing, and that is Departures Stocks, our brand new channel. Almost at 3,000 subscribers, guys. Head on over to Departures Stocks and smash that subscribe button. I will be dropping a video on my top five silver stocks for 2021. So, so check out that video, guys. I know it's not going to get as many views as the MindMed video, but I want to keep the diversity up, and I've stressed diversity over the past while. So as MindMed and the psychedelic sector has now consolidated, the fact that I've been diversified has really supported and helped the portfolio so much. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited to see silver and gold perform just like I am for psychedelics. And then last but not least, I will be updating our full access insider group. So if you are interested in you know my full public portfolio, different stocks I buy and sell, a private video every week for the group talking strategy and all of the companies that you know I'm looking at all the time, including the three silver stocks that we're talking about today. I also let the group know, you know, potential companies that we are looking at working with before they happen. So lots of interesting stuff in the group. Take a look, 10 bucks a month or $100 per year. All of the content is right there. You can see it's, uh, it gets bigger and bigger every month. So anyways, now let's get into your overall recap. So what happened on the markets today? Dow climbs on gains in energy industrials. The Dow climbed Wednesday led by energy and industrial sector as bullish sentiment on stocks continue into the final days of the year. So we are seeing a little bit of a rally. The markets are up 0.24%, S&P up 0.19%. But the real winners today, guys, the real winners are gold at 1896 and silver at 2673. So let's take a look at the DXY and we called this, but the dollar is tanking. 89.66. Now, we are at lows in the week, but you know, the dollar has not dipped below 89. Now, we're looking at the five year chart here. I expect maybe a little bit more downside. 89 should be a test. And if we look at the max chart, if we don't hold that level, then I feel like we could drop to the 80s, which would spark a tremendous rally for gold, in my opinion. So, gold and silver, silver especially. So, let's look at the charts for gold. Gold is up 0.7% or $13.25 to 1896. So let's just, you know, stop the manipulation and let us get above 1900. In fact, you know, we should be above 2000 in my opinion, but um, that's just a manipulated market. Whatever, I still love the fundamentals and I'm still a diehard gold and silver bull. So I will maintain that. Silver, on the other hand, performing much better, up 1.97% to 2672, almost $27 which is like two or three bucks away from its previous yearly high, as we can see here, yearly high of like 29.26 or something. We can see it right here, 29.91, sorry, almost $30 per ounce. So I think into 2021, we're gonna head much higher. I'm hoping in the next couple of years, we're gonna hit 50 and above. I feel like it has to happen due to the amount of stimulus, due to the amount of debt, and um, we've hit 50 before. so. Gold's already set record highs. I think silver needs to follow suit. And all of the things make sense for that to happen. I mean, the precious metal aspect, safe haven demand, yeah, sure, it's gonna follow gold. But I've been talking about this for weeks, I don't know, probably months. Silver, industrial uses, electronics, electric vehicles, solar panels, green energy, all of this stuff. And not to mention production's declining, demand's gonna increase its basic economics, so I'm gonna maintain my long-term bullish stance on silver especially, more so than gold. Silver should get the spotlight in 2021. That's my prediction. So what market crash has Frank Holmes, watch this interview, it's a really good interview. Frank Holmes is an interesting dude. 2021 is not going to be the year of another market crash said Frank Holmes, CEO of US Global Investors. In fact, the economy is expected to see a substantial rebound followed by a rally in gold stocks and Bitcoin. So let's go. What's the commentary today? Gold and silver prices are moderately higher in midday trading Wednesday, a depreciating US dollar on the foreign exchange market. That's how the US dollar index hit a 2.5 year low is bullish for the precious metal sector. So come on, the dollar needs to continue on tanking. So charts show more upside for gold in 2021. And yeah, do you think? I mean, we saw this long period of consolidation, but what this looks to be or what this looks like to me is a resumption of the uptrend. So if it's a slow and steady resumption this time, I'm not gonna complain guys. And that's kind of what we've seen over the last month is just this nice, healthy 
grind higher. And although I want to see gold above 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, whatever, I would much rather see gold climb slow and steady as opposed to an epic parabolic move up and then a crash and then super volatility. I kind of think that that's what's going to happen for gold. I think it's going to get a little bit more spicy for silver for sure. And we've seen that silver tends to be more volatile, but um, that's kind of what I'm looking for. So let's see, we've got like a couple more quick articles. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but I wanted to point out Dr. Copper eyes $4 a pound in 2021. So this is another article, technical article written by Jim Wyckoff, just a short and sweet article about copper. They're saying that it should get to about four bucks a pound. So more upside for copper stocks. So anyways, guys, that's it for the commentary. I'm going to talk quickly about these three companies that I wanted to highlight their performance more specifically. Um, and the fact that uh, I did bring them to you guys when they were substantially cheaper. So the first company, I started talking about Gatto Silver when it was, uh, this is on the American side, but I know that I bought it on the 10th. I also bought it back there. Um, I bought it two or three times when it was around $7 American and now we're sitting at almost $12 American and it was the largest IPO in the silver sector in quite some time. Now it's got a market cap of 561 million led by a very famous billionaire investor. I couldn't find their investor presentation, but here we can see um, Electrum and Affiliates own 45%, Fidelity owns 13, MERS owns 11, other institutional and private investors own 29.6, percent of the shares and the management directors own 0.8 percent so the thing I like about this company is they are a producer they are an explorer and if we look here their contained measured and indicated resources are consistently climbing now over 200 million ounces 2020 estimated to 2022 estimated production growth of 192 percent so they're set to really capitalize on this bull market in silver and that's overshadowing, you know, that's overshadowing Fortuna Silver Mines by a long shot, almost three times. So this is a very exciting company. And I really think that they're starting to shine because investors are starting to realize that, holy smokes, these guys are going to grow production by a lot. Not only that, they've got a very decent AISC of $11.77, estimated length of mine co-product AISC. Here we can see, guys, production and AISC. So right now, 2017 down to 13 and then 2022 down to $10 per ounce. And if we can see in 2022, the free cash flow of $122 million, their free cash flow is set to dramatically increase. So that's what I definitely like to see. So that's it for Gato Silver. Do your research on this, guys. This is not financial advice. I'm simply talking about a stock that has really surprised me. I didn't expect this type of performance, but um, I'm happy that I found out about it and put a little chunk of change in there. So we're sitting up 70% now and I plan to hold this one for a while. I think that these silver stocks are just at the start of this rally. If we hit 50 bucks per ounce for silver, I think almost anything that we touch in the silver sector is gonna be much higher. So I do plan to put more money into the silver sector um, and we'll see what happens guys. So Aftermath Silver, Aftermath Silver now. So we started talking about this again around a dollar, I believe. I made a video a month or two ago talking about, you know, Aftermath Silver. It might be one to watch. We interviewed Michael Williams, their chairman, not too long ago as well. And um, now it's sitting at $1.43, very close to 52-week highs. If you take a look at their five-year chart, it's been a tremendous run. Um, they've got some really interesting projects, three unique high-grade projects. So watch the interview, watch the other videos I've done, head on over to their website. They just recently released a new resource estimate showing millions more ounces in the ground. So they completed their CIM NI43101 compliant mineral resource for the Chalicola project, 6.64 million tons at 165 grams per ton, 2.8 million tons at 124 grams per ton in inferred resources. They, they announced a deal to acquire 100% of their Berenguela project. Now they've got three silver projects, Berenguela in Peru plus Chalicola and Cachinal in Chile at different stages of exploration and development. So they closed a $17.2 million no warrant private placement to fund its planned work. The treasury currently stands at $16.2 million. So well financed with some interesting projects. The stocks performed very well. And um, I just can, I just want to 
hold this. It offers really good leverage to the price of silver. I think silver is going to go up. So despite the stock being at 52 week highs, if silver goes up, I think that uh, the silver stocks are going to keep on running. So that's my stance and my thoughts on the sector. And then the last company we're taking a look at here is Reina Silver. So I did do an interview with their CEO. I believe it was around, in, it was in the 90 cent level. Now we're sitting at $1.30 and I've been watching this stock break out over the last couple of days. Very happy. I did stay patient with it. I picked up a few shares along the way in the 90s. And um, now I'm happy with my position. Looking like it's heading higher, finally breaking out. One thing I was noticing was the stock was consistently making higher lows, higher lows, trending higher. We're getting a breakout. I think we're going to run into some resistance around $1.50. But I think, you know, if silver does continue on, a lot of these stocks have the potential to hit fresh 52 week highs or fresh all time highs. So those are my thoughts on silver for now, guys. And the last thing I wanted to talk about was, in fact, Discovery Metal. So I need to do some more research on this. I don't know what was up with that late day sell off. We dropped all the way down to $1.84 and bounced right back up. Some sketchy things are happening and I really want to investigate this. So guys, we're going to go to Canadian Insider real quick. This is a website that we can use to check, um, you know, who's who's selling as an insider. I, you can use this for pretty much any company. It's called Canadian Insider. And let's take a look and see what's been going on over the past six months. So in terms of insider selling, there was lots of insider selling by the looks of this down here up here at $2.20, which makes me a little concerned. Now, was that for tax selling? Could be, totally. Eric Sprott still has a really big position in the company, so I wouldn't be super concerned. Now, at the same time, you know, we've got Mark O'Day exercising 400,000 warrants for common shares to pick them up at a dollar. We've got Mark selling 25,000 common shares at $2.08. We've got Mark selling 50,000 shares. But you know what? By the, look of, by the looks of this, guys, he was just selling maybe for tax purposes, but then exercising his warrants on December 21st. So we just saw... So actually, you know, this this all adds up now. This all makes sense a little bit more to me. The fact that he's uh, exercised 400,000 warrants and he sold different chunks of shares. So we can just quickly do the math here. I mean, there's 100,000 shares. There's 125,000 shares. There's 175,000 shares. There is 225,000 shares. So he just exercised his warrants. Now he's got 400,000 shares for a dollar and he sold roughly half that position. To me, that kind of makes sense. Still, I don't know what happened on the day. I wasn't happy with the performance in Discovery Metals, as this is actually one of the biggest positions that I've taken in the silver sector, and I expected a green day today. So we have been dropping substantially from $2 down to a buck 90, even though silver has been running, which is a little bit annoying, a little bit concerning. So I'll see what happens. I know my position is still in the green, but I, I might look to take a few chips off the table just as I've got quite a few shares. This is my biggest position in one specific account in the silver sector as it has been a good performer. I do like the institutional ownership by Eric Sprott. We can check right here, guys. We'll actually do this. Um, we'll do this research on the fly. I'm going to go to their corporate presentation just to reiterate a few things. Now, I did buy this company for a specific reason. I want I, I want exposure to the exploration stage companies in the silver mining sector. They've had a massive drill program and I do think mid 2021, we're gonna get a big payout for this company as they have their 2018 resource estimate. It showed 1.5 billion ounces of silver in the ground, a little bit lower grade with their focal point being 660 million ounces of silver in the ground at 104 grams per ton. Not too, too bad. But um, their phase one drill program, over 50,000 meters of drilling. And then what do we have to look forward to in 2021? Well, that was their new resource model in second half of 2021. Geology and Structure Incorporated for the first time. Data set includes 150, sorry, data set to include 180 plus thousand meters of drilling, over 350 drill holes. And at that point, you know, when they, whenever they announce a new estimate and if the results are good, which I expect them to be. Um, 
the stock tends to go up. Like let's look at Aftermath Silver. You know, we were patient with Aftermath Silver. Aftermath Silver traded 80, 90, 70, 80, 90, 70, a dollar. And then they released their resource estimate and now the stock just took off. So I think that that's what's gonna happen for Discovery Metals. My only concern is, is the stock gonna go sideways, you know, for the first half of 2021? Is it gonna trade between $1.80 and two, just above two for the next while? If silver has a dramatic run, I think that we'll continue to see gains. But um, let's now look quickly at their um, at their ownership. Who owns the company? So this is their timeline. New resource estimate and revamped PEA property-wide drilling up until 2022. So some exciting things going on. There is a phase one drill program that's going to go up until Q2 of 2021 and metallurgical testing as well. So the capital structure, Eric Sprott himself owns 27% of the company with institutions owning 28 and management and the board owning 11%. So that's a substantial amount of insider ownership. I really like to see management with skin in the game and with Discovery Metals having a market cap of $585 million. I mean, looking good. I couldn't really find much going on here one week, four weeks. Um, October, they announced some really good drill results, but I don't really see anything that concerns me too much. Although I'm wondering what, what that end of day volatility was. But anyways, guys, that's it for the video. I wanted to talk about those companies. I want to talk about my opinion on the silver sector. This video was more so silver focused, just as silver has been the performer and I have been talking about it, calling out silver's gonna outperform gold. So I'm happy to see you guys. Congratulations to all my precious metal investors. I will continue to cover this, although it doesn't get as many views as psychedelics and all of the other sectors, the growth sectors, the EV sectors do. We know what we're doing here. I'm maintaining my long-term bullish stance on gold and silver and I'm really happy to see it performing and I'm really excited for 2021 to see this trade unfold. So guys, that's it for the video. Thank you so much for watching and always remember departures. Capital is for information, education, and entertainment purposes only. Don't buy or sell a stock because you heard it on here. Buy or sell a stock because you've done your research, you've done your thorough due diligence, and you make your own personal investment decisions for yourself. This video is not financial advice. We'll see you guys in our next video.